on today's episode. Coach, I'm Isaac Ostrom. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. I'm a licensed tile and general bee contractor in Northern California, but today I'm coming to you from Denver, Colorado. Uh, we're working on the Shower for Bow project. If you want to see the other videos related to that, um, click the link that I'm going to put up right here. Uh, but today is day two, okay? So, day two, yesterday we got all of the wall board up, we got our plumbing in, we got a lot of the prep work done, uh, we floated the walls. But now, uh, the first thing we're, we did was we got our drain flange in. So we got our drain flange set. We got our deck mud mixed up. And I didn't go through how we mix up our deck mud. I got a ton of videos on those. You can check those videos out another time. But we have our deck mud mixed up. It's a four to one sand to cement ratio mixed with just a little bit of water so that it clumps up and just packs in a nice little ball. It's not a wet mortar that you would think of for like a wall float. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're gonna do our dry pack here and uh, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, set a perimeter screen. But I did use the 3701 to pack under the flange, but I'm using my deck mud that we brought all the way from California uh, just because we love this mud so much. I mean, you can, here's, a, here's a little ball of what deck mud looks like when it's mixed up correctly. You can pack it into a ball, but it's dry enough that it just crumbles like that. So, beautiful deck mud, beautiful deck mud. So I'm gonna start a perimeter screen. And I also wet, I, I pre-wet my float so it didn't suck all the water out of the deck mud when it went up against it. Okay, so we got to get our slope right, and slope is correct. Slope is a quarter inch per foot. We'll probably focus in there. Correct slope is a quarter inch per foot. So we are sitting at, I believe we're about an inch and a half at the drain. We're an inch and a quarter. So that means um, I want to be two inches thick at the wall. So the easiest way to do it is to actually get a level and I just start in one of the corners and if I have something that's three quarter inch thick it's really easy. Let me see. Well that's going to be Perfect. So this little torpedo, when it's set on its side, is three quarters. So the easiest way to do it is I'll put that there and I'll get my bubble level and that's going to give me three quarters fall. So I need to come up a little bit more. Okay, so we got about three quarters of fall right there. I'm gonna have my little indention. And that's what I'm gonna work off going around the entire perimeter. So once 
a little different about this this float too is that it, we're doing an envelope cut. And if you don't know what that is, you'll find out and I'll explain it a little later, but an envelope cut is going to use large format tile. We're actually going to cut relief cuts going from each corner to each corner of the drain. So we'll have it fall that way. So we're not really shaping a bowl like we would doing a mosaic or a smaller tile that can conform to that bowl. Large tiles, um, you know, you can't do that. So I'm going to have point to point screeds going. Um, the long straight edge, is that it? Oh, for some reason it looks shorter. I'm going to do the same thing with this back wall. If you have to tap, tap on your Stabila or, or beat on it like I'm doing, uh, try not to hit on the handle holes because they'll bend if you, if you whack them too, too much or too hard. But these are really durable. There's actually a lifetime warranty with them, so if anything ever happens to them like that, um, you can get them replaced. There it is, you can see my bubble right there. So I use a combination of edges, levels, Tamping, screening, whatever you can do to get that nice little screed line there. The short runs are easy. This is a pretty wide, it's probably hard to tell from the pictures, but this is a six foot wide opening. So that's a pretty long run to, to try to make level. These short, short sidewalls, if you have a smaller shower, it's actually pretty easy. But you can see the deck mud, how it, it's just light and fluffy. It goes where you want it to go, and then when you pack it down, it gets it gets hard as a rock. See, that's what that's what good deck metal will look like when you flatten it out. Looks like glass. screw anchoring holes so you can actually mechanically anchor the flange down to the floor so packed it with mud and screwed it down got it level so it's not moving around I really like that feature we did have to um, kind of ream out the holes a little bit so that our screws sat flush with it but that was pretty easy so yeah I really like that part we coated it with the Hydro Band last night before we left. So if I did this correctly, I'm going to end up level here. And we are. So that's level and then this is connects here. So now I got my level screed all the way around. And you can see that was pretty simple to do. So that didn't take me long at all to do that. So the thing with uh, with foam pans too, so if, if this were a foam pan, and so when you need to cut cut the edges off or whatever you need to do, you end up with weird slopes because everything's sloping. So if you if you shorten it, you're gonna have this weird valley. When you float your pans, you're gonna get a perfect level all the way around the perimeter. That way, when you set your wall tiles, your wall tiles are gonna be level all the way around. Just better. So 
So I'm just going to kind of push the mud where it's kind of going to be. Again, you got to figure on it's probably going to tamp down a good half inch to three quarters. So don't don't go level with it to where you want to be. Hey Jason, can you pour a little more on here? Maybe maybe like half of that bucket right on there, it's right on the top. Yeah, more than that. Please. There we go. That's good. 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 Yeah, one of the things about the mud that we use, I think this Dynacrete bag mud that we get at home in California, you know, everybody asks me where they can get it, and it's it's a small family business in Oroville, California, which is really cool. Um, so, besides the the West Coast, California mainly. Besides California, I I don't think they distribute the mud anywhere, but. I think for one it has a different sand in it. We have a more coarse sand and then we also, I think it's a leaner mixture. I think we're, we're right around five to one as opposed to a four to one that you'll see with the Mape. Some guys even go three to one. And what happens when you do that, you end up with really clumpy mud. It's not light and fluffy like this and easy to push around. You end up with all of these little balls of the cement because it's just too rich. Uh, if you read your TCNA handbook, uh, they do have in, um, you know, in those first 30 or 40 pages that nobody reads, uh, they do talk about um, setting with thick bed um, installations. And yeah, and they say typically, they, I think they even set up to six to one. Uh, but yeah, five to one is about the right mixture that I've found. I don't think there's any need to go any richer than that. It just causes you problems. And I think it's even weaker because a lot of guys end up with like flaking on the top. That's one of the biggest uh, biggest questions I get or issues when I get an email from people who try this for the first time. They say, oh, well, you know, came back the next day and was flaking off. And that's, that's from having too rich of a moisture or a, too rich of a mix and packing it down too hard. And it just, it doesn't create a nice uniform bed. You can see I'm just kind of getting the mud about where I want it. I'm probably an inch higher than where I need to be on average. Keep your wood float clean if you're using uh, wood float. So now since we're doing an envelope cut, I'm going to have to do something like this, going edge to edge. And I'm going to line it up with these I'm going to line it up with the marks that I made. So what I did is I set the drain in here and I shot a laser from the corner of the drain after I got the drain square, shot it to the corner. So that's what those lines represent. So there's another screed point. those those set in like I said you see I tamp down that's about as hard as you can tamp deck mud down when it's fluffy and I have I have about a half inch I'd say about a half inch left flat draw like this it works I like the wood float for darbing you know smoothing everything out now I'm just screeding little bits out at a time So you can see this part is, re is riding right on my 
my level that I created when I get too much mud. Put it somewhere. Remember, you can always take off more. It's a lot harder to, to add to it. It's not hard. You gotta sprinkle some more and tamp it down, but I always try to do it in smaller increments. Try not to gouge into your mud. Let it ride, kind of go easy. You can use circle, circle motions. Kind of makes it easier to screed. Should be a really nice little uniform slope. Good slope on the pan, going everywhere. And see, that's the thing about using envelope cuts. I didn't create a valley in here. It's got a straight line because everything's going to be going like that. No, it's kind of hard. It's probably hard to tell on the camera where my level line is, but I can see it pretty clearly. I'm just being real careful not to dig into it. So I can even take my longer wood float now. screed marks. Uh-huh. I mean how do you how do you refine that? Uh, I mean it's all the way over here, yeah. Like if I just if I go lightly down and just kind of let the trowel fall and you screw it off, yeah you can find it. You get to that packed area, you yeah, can see the difference. Yeah that's right there. Yeah the packed area is definitely different. Okay. Yeah. Oh sure, okay that's cool. Yeah. Yeah it'll just kind of want to fall off yeah. of it. I do my screening, I, I go back with another good little tamp, and it's not tamping down much more. I mean, it's just kind of firming up that surface a little bit. And then I can kind of, again, go with my circular motions and take a little more material off, kind of blend in, blend in everything. final final push down and it's locking in all of the grains of sand with each other that's why coarse sand works so good because it interlocks with itself or something you can still fill it in.
there's one side done. I'll just do the same thing to this other side and uh, we'll have a nice little float. Alright, All right, so we got our mortar bed done. So everything screeded off really nice. So we're going to go ahead and put the sheet membrane on this. I'm using Laticrete Hydro Band sheet membrane and we're using Multimax Light thin set and uh, mixed to a fairly loose consistency. So Multimax Light, it's a little bit different. Uh, the first time I was using it I had trouble with it, just, um, it just seems really messy to me. But I'm going to see what I can do with it um, being a little more mindful. So uh, this will be interesting. Yeah, so when I'm sitting on a fresh mortar bed, this mortar bed's probably been down for a good two or three hours at least, wouldn't you say, Zach? Yeah. So it's firmed over, it's it's skimmed up a little bit, it's still soft, like I could still push into it, but it's firmed up on the top, so I don't have to be as careful with it. But see how, like, this is Multimax Light. You see, I just moved my trowel like that, and it flung a little bit of it. That doesn't happen with normal thin sets, so I I have trouble with it just getting everywhere. I can't I can't go at it like I do with normal thin set. But setting on a fresh mortar bed is really nice. It's kind of like setting on a, a cushion. But you can hear it scraping, so it, it's firmed up quite a bit. It's pretty warm out here in Denver. It's it's probably upper 90s, maybe 100 degrees. So everything's drying pretty fast. So this is going on pretty good. And I believe, Zach, we take our membrane all the way to here. Yep. Yeah. See, look, I just put my hand in that plop. I'm telling you, man, I just end up with this stuff everywhere. Okay. Yeah, this guy has a little bit smaller notch than some of the other ones. This is like a 337, it's not a quarter inch notch. I think it's still okay. So I got my Multimax light all spread out and I did, I'm trying something a little different. I'm kind of doing directional troweling going in a circle that I want to try to see if that helps air move away in one direction. Because um, one thing you you have to avoid is air, air pockets and it's easy to get air pockets under the membrane. I'm just going to put my pre-cut sheet down. You might ask why I, I like a sheet membrane on a pan. One reason is, is I can put it on a fresh mortar bed. If I were to use Laticrete uh, Hydroband, just the regular liquid applied, I'd have to wait three days from when I floated this pan. And we usually just don't have time, that time. so. I like using a sheet membrane, plus I just trust it a little more that it was, uh, you know, it's more durable, it's a consistent thickness, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, mill thicknesses being exact, like the liquid apply, you know, they're the really tight tolerances on how thick you can get it. I don't have to worry about it, I just put thin set down and, and spread it, so. So first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll just use my hand and try to work any of the major air bubbles out. And again, I'm going with my um, the direction that I was troweling. So hopefully the little grooves in the V-notch help, help the air go out to the edges. And then we also cut a slit. Zach did this, we cut a little slit in our membrane so that air can get out that way. 
because um, sheet, sheet membranes, that's, that's one of your big, big uh, enemies, is getting air trapped. And that's one of the reasons why you don't see me rolling it up walls or trying to roll it up over a curb. Because invariably you always end up with these air bubbles and you'll see them form on the edges here. Um, and sometimes you don't even notice them until the next day. And you come in and you're like, oh man, there's an air bubble right there. So I'm just, I like using my hand because I can feel it. And this Multimax light is really, really sticky. And I think it's a great application to use it when you're setting sheet membranes. I can't really pull it up to check my coverage because it'll pull my mortar bed up. But uh, I, I know it's going to have a really good... Um, let's see, what should I use in my 6 inch knife? Yeah, I know it's getting a really good bond on there. So I'm going to be careful with my 6 inch knife and just kind of do the same thing. Working in one direction, expelling any of that air. And the nice thing with a fresh mortar bed, if you feel a grain of sand from your deck mud, like you'll feel them. And that's why you want to be real careful with your, like I could feel it, it caught right there. You can feel the grain of sand and you can just push it down into the mortar bed. Where if this was a, a completely cured mortar bed, you definitely couldn't do that. You know, this, this is the first time I've used this Hydro Brand sheet membrane. And so far, I actually like the way it's reacting to what I'm doing better than using Schluter Curdy. And you see I use Curdy on, on everything just because it's so available and it's what they were the first ones to have it. But to me it seems like, I don't know if this is a little thicker, it's a little firmer. Uh, it's, it's wanting to stay down. I don't feel like it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to explain, but it feels like it's really getting a good bond on when I'm pushing it down. And I'm not, you know, I'm not paid, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, so it's really cool that I can speak freely on uh, whether I like a product or not. If, if I tell you I like it, you know it's because I like it. It's not because someone's paying me to make a video for it, even, even though I've had offers to do that. I want to keep it real. The money's really not worth it to me. Maybe a lot of money, but not that money that they're offering. <laughs> yeah, this feels really good. I'm feeling really good about this. Again, I want to thank Emser Tile in Denver, Colorado for, or Emser, you know, their nationwide company, and I want to thank them again for donating all these supplies. This was super cool of them. They really didn't have to do it, and the team at Emser, they're great. I mean, their customer service is awesome. If you ever need anything, uh, you can probably find an Emser Tile in a town near you, so if you do need some tile, look them up. Emser Tile, they do do good stuff. I know they're a Laticrete dealer. I think they have customs. I know in my my town they do tech also and um, yeah good good tile setter shop good pro shop for sure yeah this memory is just stuck down so nice okay so I think I'm good with that I'm gonna go ahead I like to cut these out I don't know exactly where it's supposed to end here Yeah, this membrane is definitely thicker. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go right to there. 
Yeah, this membrane is definitely thicker than the curdy. At least it's harder to cut. Or else those are really dull scissors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me get a new blade and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you. Yeah, I like to make sure, because this has a little recess here, so I want to make sure this, this sticks down. It's got a little divot, so I'm making sure that no air is... See, I just heard a big air bubble come out of there. Because, yeah, if I were to push this down, air will get trapped. So it's got to come... Everything has to come this, this direction, like this. I'll go down and then out. See, there's an air bubble right there. Uh, we're actually using the butt end of my taping knife here and pushing down in the divot to get our nice little divot here because air was getting trapped in here and it wasn't allowing a nice tight fit, nice tight roll down over the flange in here. So now that we use this, it kind of just pushed all that mud and formed a really nice divot I'm really happy with how that turned out. This to me feels way more solid than Schluter's hookup. I'm really happy with this. Okay, we got all of our waterproof membrane done. This is a hydroband sheet membrane uh, using Multimax Light. And I have to tell you, this is by far the best combination of sheet membrane waterproofing that I've done. Um, there was something about the membrane itself, it just kind of went where I wanted it to go. And it was flexible enough to really kind of go into the corners and stay, had good memory. And using the Multimax light with it, I feel really good. I mean, it, it just felt like everything was stuck really good together and I don't feel like I need to do anything else to this waterproofing down here. With the Schluter Curdy, that's why you see me though, using the Ardex 8 Plus 9 over it, is because there's always little wrinkles and gaps and buildup of thin set that makes me uncomfortable just leaving it that way. So using this Multimax light, it's tight, I know it's adhered really well. The thing is with this Multimax light, uh, Zach calls it melted marshmallow. It doesn't have silica in it and it's just super sticky and you can build it up. You can build it up three quarters and you can also use it really thin. So it's a really versatile adhesive and I feel so good about this and I think I'm going to switch over to using Hydroban products.